Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and today we're going to look at the results from the most recent Champions League over in Japan this weekend. This one was a massive tournament with over 2,600 players and it was also the first major tournament in Japan that featured the rotation. Yes, this tournament of course is in the Temporal Forces meta in the rotation and that's pretty good because we want to see the results of the new format. We want to see what decks are winning in the new format, what cards are good, of course, because we have EUIC, our first major tournament, and this is the first big one in Japan. And, of course, we've already looked at quite a few deck lists already over the past few weeks from the rotation. Those are from, like, smaller tournaments, like City Leagues and stuff, which are almost the equivalent of a League Cup for us. Um, but this is, like, a Regionals for Japan, and this is a big tournament. There are some very interesting results. Unfortunately, we don't have every single deck list available here. We are missing a few deck lists, and we're also missing um, just a result from uh, the person who got 10th place. We don't even know what they played, unfortunately. And we don't have all the deck lists, but Limitless have added a feature now where you can actually see rotation decks, uh, which I think is really, really cool. You can actually see cards in the rotation here from their tournaments. So I think they've also added City League results also, which makes it a little bit easier to view the results instead of going to uh, Pokeka Book, which I use usually to look at my results for the videos I do on the channel. So that's really, really cool. Uh, we'll leave a link down below to Limitless if you want to go check out the site yourself. And if you're new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below um thank you all sport on the last video on the unfair stamp video crazy stuff i still can't get over that busted card and uh, without further ado let's get into it because oh boy do we have some very crazy stuff so lugia v star won the tournament yes you heard it right lugia v star won a post rotation tournament and the biggest post rotation tournament so far was won by lugia who would have guessed because it's crazy because right now in our current standard format Lugia is not very popular or playable. It's not a great deck. And that's mainly because of stuff like Charizard, EX, Maridon being really good too. Lugia's got a lot of enemies right now in our format. But Lugia did take down the first major rotation tournament in Japan. Which I find kind of hilarious. Because Lugia's like, it's old news, bro. It's, it's two formats now since it dominated the format. And it's still winning. What is going on? Now, it's all because of Sinchino. This card is literally what makes Lugia a playable deck in the new format. It's got the attack Special Round, which for two colorless energy does 70 damage times the number of special energy on this Pokemon. So if you double Archeops to your Sinchino, you can put four energy on it. Attach for turn, get five energy on a Sinchino. That's doing enough damage to one a KO Charizard EX. And that's, again, one of the things that makes Lugia not very great right now in our current meta, Charizard EX. Charizard EX is a really tough deck for Lugia to play against. A lot of the time, when playing against Lugia, you go around the Lugias. You can boss the Archeopses up, knock them out. Even now in the rotation, there's Prime Catcher. But when there's a Sinchino in the active with four energy on it, one hit KOing anything in the active spot, you kind of have to answer the Sinchino. It's very similar to Single Strike Tyranitar. This is kind of like the new age of Lugia, and it's going to be with Sinchino. Now, there are some other new cards in the deck. Um, the big one... And another card that I think gives Lugia a massive buff is Mist Energy. Now, Roaring Moon EX does get a little bit weaker with rotation, mainly because it loses a lot of its, like, turn one pop-off potential with the loss of Moltres V and also the Battle VIP. However, Mist Energy is a card that can keep Roaring Moon in check a little bit. It does have that effect where when it's attached to a Pokemon, prevent all effects of attacks done to that Pokemon, meaning that Roaring Moon cannot frenzy gouging a Pokemon with the Mist Energy on. It also blocks Star Requiem and... Giratina actually had a result this tournament, so this card is another great addition to Lugia because now you have a way to not get instantly KO'd by Giratina and Roaring Moon. You also have Snorlax in the deck, which is still a really strong attacker to have in the format. Lost Zone decks are still pretty popular in the rotation. Um, the crazy thing is this deck plays Master Ball as its ace spec. So it is weird to think that we all were very scared of Prime Catcher when it first got revealed. And then there's like the new Maximum Belt, which is like really popular. However, the, the first ace spec card to actually be in a winning deck list in Japan in their first major in the rotation is Master Ball. That's a pretty good meme. Um, but it's a great card to play in Lugia. You just search your deck for a Pokemon, put it in your hand. It's a great way to get an Archeops out you know, when you need to get double chops. Obviously, the deck still has the usual Lugia formula with the Caption Aromas, with the Ultra Ball. You do lose Professor Burnett, which kind of sucks. You can't Burnett anymore, which does hurt the possibility of that Archeops. But when you have stuff like Master Ball, Aroma, there's also Jock in the deck, which gets you two evolutions. There's Great Ball. There's a lot of ways to find Pokemon. Another reason why you want to play Heavy Pokemon Search is, while Sinchino is really good, it's also a Stage 1 Pokemon. So it's not like Tyranitar 
or even the amazing rares from previous formats where they're just basic. You can just put them down on your bench, load them up with a million energy, and just swing. Sinchino is a stage one. So it is crazy to think Lugia did this well, considering you got to think of the amount of things you got to do to make this deck work. You got to get Lugia turn two, two Archeops and Discard Pile turn two. You also got to get a Minchino down turn one, and then a Sinchino turn two. That's a lot of work. However, even though despite all that work, this deck still won, that proves this deck actually has legs in the new format. So we'll have to see how Lugia does in future um, tournaments in Japan. I don't think there's another Champions League that's going to happen um, before EUIC. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's not. There might be, but we'll have to see where the results go from here. Very interesting that Lugia won um, thanks to Sinchino. However, the deck that got second place is Arceus. I'm telling you, what year is this, bro? What? How? Arceus and Lugia in the finals in the 2024 rotation format? We gotta be living in a simulation. But this is kind of a cool list. It's got Alolan Vulpix V-Star as the partner of choice. We've actually seen a few Arceus decks using Vulpix with Gudra V-Star as the other Pokemon to play in the deck. This one is just straight up a Vulpix V-Star arc deck. And I don't hate it. Vulpix V-Star is really strong against a lot of big cards. With that attack Snow Mirage, you're good against Charizard EX, Shen Pao, Goldengo, even, you know, Lugia, if you can get rid of their Sinchinos in time. Vulpix can be a really annoying wall to deal with, and it's just really good. The only problem I can see with Vulpix in the new format is Prime Catcher. If your opponent can go Prime Catcher boss, they can get around it. The idea is you can Turo into a single Vulpix and leave one Vulpix V-Star in play as your only Pokemon, making it near impossible for some decks to win. There's actually a lot of really cool cards in the deck. It is playing the double Turo. Like I said, you want to be able to leave yourself with a single Vulpix in play. There's also the new supporter card, Eerie, which allows you to discard two items from your opponent's hand. It's a pretty dirty card. You're able to get rid of rare candy. I guess so against Charizard, what you can do is you can Starbirth for this card and then remove two rare candies from their hand and then make it really hard for them to pull off rare candy Zard. That's kind of cool. Um, you also got the Prime Catcher in the deck as the Ace Becca Choice. Char Arceus does love Maximum Belt because it allows Arceus V-Star to one-shot basic EX Pokemon, which is kind of nutty. But Prime Catcher is also pretty good too. And this deck does prioritize playing Prime Catcher. There's Mist Energy, which is great with Vulpix. You can't get KO'd by Roaring Moon's Frenzy Gouging, which is pretty nice. Um, also really good with Arceus in general, not just the Alolan Vulpix. Still has stuff like Judge in the deck. Well, the you know, Arceus does lose Path. You don't really want to play Path in this deck anyways if Path still existed. You wouldn't want to play a Path to Peak in a Vulpix V-Star deck, right? But... You do still have the Judge. Judge just still being a very good card. Sometimes Judge can win you games. Another very wild card to see is Medical Energy. When it's attached to a Pokemon, um, whenever you attach this... Well, when you attach the card, sorry, from your hand to the Pokemon, you heal 30 from it, which is kind of cool. So it's kind of how you keep your Vulpix V-Star alive. If your opponent can chip away at it with, like, Charmanders or something... You can, like, heal it with the medical energy and fix some of the math, which is kind of sick. So really interesting stuff. Lugia V-Star and Arceus V-Star in the finals in a 2024 tournament. Don't know what to tell you, but that is the world we live in. Of course, wouldn't be a tournament without Snorlax getting top four. Yeah, Snorlax did get top four in the tournament. Snorlax is still a good deck in the new meta. Now, you got to keep in mind, in Japan, they do best of one instead of best of three um, for their tournament round. So Snorlax control doesn't usually do as well, though I think Snorlax is still a fantastic deck in the new meta. The deck does gain new tools, of course, like the addition of cards, like the new Eerie, which is a dirty card to play in the deck, and also the new Hero Cape A-Spec card, giving Snorlax 100 extra HP. It's kind of d disgusting, too. Of course, it does also gain the advantage of Charizard being BDIF. Charizard was the best deck in the format heading in to the Champions League. It was S-tier, and Snorlax has a fantastic Charizard matchup still, even with rotation and new cards. Charizard still takes a pretty big fat L to Snorlax. That's why we're still seeing Snorlax win. So unfortunately for everybody who hates Snorlax, it ain't going anywhere. It's still going to be a good deck, and uh, it arguably stays just as good as it is right now, and maybe even gets better with some of the new cards we get. There was a Charizard in top four. Again, Charizard was like the best deck in the format heading into the tournament. There was bound to be one that did well. Um, it didn't win the tournament, but it still did pretty good. And now, interestingly enough, the best performing Zard list was the Bibberal Charizard deck instead of the Pidgey Zard. One of the main reasons why Bibberal Zard is doing good right now and it's getting more attention is because um, Pidgey Zard is a lot weaker to Radiant Greninja, which is a lot more common thanks to Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher Canceling Clone is very easy to pull off in the new format, making Radiant Greninja a huge problem when playing against Goldengo and Shempao. So... 
when you play Bibberol, the b -doofs can't get killed by Greninja when they're on the bench. Because you, even though you clone the Manaphy, you can't hit the b -doof, which does help your consistency. Bibberol is not as good as Pidgeot. Um, you're not guaranteed a card every time you use it. It's a little bit clunky, but it does get the job done. It lets you stabilize a bit of a better board state. Um, I guess one of the interesting things about this list is the addition of the brand new Codebreaker Solution, which allows you to put two cards on top of your deck. So you can use this card with Bibberol to guarantee the cards you want, which does, of course, make it easier to pull off a rare candy Charizard, which this deck does play three of. Interestingly enough, there's no maximum belt in the deck. That was a very good card to play in Charizard. A lot of the, a lot of the Zard lists we looked at before were all running one of maximum belt. This one plays Prime Catcher for the Ace spec, which is very interesting. I guess when you're playing Bibberol, you do need to have a little bit of extra ways to move it because Bibberol is a bit of a thicker Pokemon. It's a bit easier to stall in the active. But yeah, Charizard, it's still good. It's probably still going to be the best deck going into like even EUIC. It's just that good of a card. It's that good of a deck. Um, unfortunately, we can't see the Lost Box deck in top eight. We have a couple Arctinas in top eight. Now, the big thing with Arctina is it does gain a few new cards. The big one, of course, is that maximum belt, allowing you to do 50 more damage to opponent's EX Pokemon, meaning that Giratina can one-shot Charizard EX with the maximum belt, or Arceus V-Star can one-shot basic EXs like Maridon, Roaring Moon. All those basic EXs get one-shot by the Arc V-Star. Uh, v now, one of the big differences with Arctina is the loss of Path of the Peak, meaning that the deck no longer has the ability to go Judge Path. Judge is still very good, though, and this deck, as you can see, does play four copies of Judge, because Judge is just that strong of a card. Iron Leaves is also really good. It does help a lot against Charizard, too, with that ability, Rapid uh, Veneer. Whenever you uh, play this Pokemon from your hand on your bench, you can switch it into the active spot and then move any number of energy from your other Pokemon to it, so you can use the Iron Leaves to move energy um, into the active and then come out of nowhere with an Iron Leaves KO on a Charizard. Really, really good with Arceus because you're already putting a ton of energy in play with Trini Nova anyways. It's got a couple TM Devo to make the Zard matchup even more winnable. Really teched out list to beat Zard to be honest. It's got Leaves, Belt, Devo, even playing Eerie in the deck to uh, allow you to uh, discard items. They're still really good against stuff like Shempow, right, to get rid of the superior retrievals and stuff, which is another reason why this Eerie sees some play. Pretty, like, pretty pretty solid 60, to be honest. The more I look at it, the more I like it. The Eeries will help against Shen Pao. Devo's even good against Shen Pao. Um, yeah, Arctina, baby. It's still good. There was another Arctina in top eight, too. This one is a bit different than the 60 we saw. This one's actually got a little bit more techy cards in it. The big one, of course, is the Grabber. Now, I've tried a Grabber arc before on the channel, um, it's all right, but it is still a cool concept. Of course, you can take a Pokemon you find from your opponent's hand and put it at the bottom of their deck, basically here to slow the opponent down. Grabber in combination with Eerie can be a pretty deadly combo because you can also get rid of rare candies and items and also Pokemon, making it very hard for your opponent to stabilize, which is kind of cool. Um, still got the Iron Leaves. You got the Maximum Belt. Pretty common stuff you'd see in Arctina. One thing to play with Arctina is the stadiums don't really matter anymore. Like, you don't need to play Path, right? The the point of Arctina right now, if you were to play it in our current format, is it is a Judge Path deck. That's one of its selling points. Path is no longer in the format, so Arctina loses that angle. So you, now you don't have to play, like, that many stadiums. Now you can make room for other cards like the Eerie and the Grabber and stuff and the Iron Leaves, which is pretty cool. And, of course, another Snorlax stall in top 8. This one does play in the Mantine here, which allows you to put a basic Pokemon from either player's discard pile onto that player's bench. Very relevant um, to force stuff into play because Echoing Horn does rotate. Very good to force a Pokemon to play. That you can just bring in and then stall with Snorlax. And this list is also playing that new Hero Cape. Um, it's got Shiyu in the deck to mill the top two cards. It's got the Eerie in the deck. Um, there's no Hand Clipper. Something I thought... Control would play, but there's no hand clipper here. Like I said, Snorlax still really good. Unfortunately, we can't see the Ancient Box deck. We also can't see the other deck, but we do have another Giratina, but this time it's Lost Tina. Lost Tina is a deck a lot of people are saying doesn't do well in the new format because it loses Path. How is this deck going to compete when it doesn't have Path anymore? Well, the deck is still just very good because Giratina V-Star is just that good of a card, and this build here did end up getting top 16 in the tournament. Um, it does have a lot of the stuff you'd see right now. It's got the Colrus, the Roxanne, the Double Boss, um, the Energy Count, even the same with the Jet Energies. However, there are some new resources. Buddy Poffin, of course, is nice. You can get your Comfies out of the deck. Iron Leaves is in the deck to help against the Charizard matchup because you can Mirage Gate to it even. even You don't have to use the ability. You can Mirage Gate to it. There's also the addition of uh, the Emergency Board, a very good card to play with Comfy, allowing the retreat costs the Pokemon this card is attached to to be one colorless less. If you put this on a Comfy, it turns your Comfy into a free retreat pivot effectively, which is really, really strong. Um, 
yeah, this is another great card for Lost Zone. Prime Catcher is a pretty good card. You can play Prime Catcher or Maxim Belt. Those are two really good cards to have in Giratina. Lost Zone, in my opinion, because, again, you can use the Maxim Belt to one-shot the Charizard, and then also you get Star Requiem, but Prime Catcher also helps a lot, too, because it's just it's a switch and a gust. It's really good in combination with Comfy. Prime Catcher is also really, really good in combination with Roxanne, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but Lost Tina is still looking like it's going to be one of the best decks in the new format, even though it did lose Path the Peak. We do have a great Tusk Mill here that did pretty good. Another very interesting archetype to kind of blow up in the new format is Great Tusk Mill. Of course, the idea of the card is it's got that attack, Earth Blast, which for two Colossus Energy, discards one card from the top of your opponent's deck. However, if you played an Ancient Supporter card from your hand this turn, you can discard three more cards. So you can discard four cards every turn. Um, it is a bulky basic with 140 HP, combine that with something like Hero's Cape to give it 100 more HP, combine that with Ancient Booster Capsule and Bravery Charm, you got yourself a pretty tanky Pokemon, and you can also play Explorer's Guidance, which is your Ancient Supporter card you can play. Um, looking at the top six cards of your deck, put two of them in your hand, discard the other cards, and then there's also the uh, Sada, which is the other Ancient Supporter that synergizes nicely with the attack of Great Tusk. So definitely very cool to see this deck do well. It's got a pretty good matchup, I think, against a lot of decks, especially decks that try to go through a lot of their deck really quickly. This deck will exceed against, but there's a lot of decks that can struggle to hit those high numbers against the Great Tusk. And that's one of the main things that makes it so strong. You can also build it up with double turbo, so you don't have to constantly use Sada to power it up, which is nice. You can still play something like Mimikyu. Interestingly enough, there's a one of Comfy. Comfy is now going to be a potential Pokemon that kind of is similar to what Mew from Celebration does right now because of the um, because of the emergency board that it does again, which is kind of crazy. Uh, another Zard here to look at. This one it was another Bibzard. It does play some interesting stuff like the Iron Mundle to force your opponent to switch. It plays a 3-3 Bibro line, which helps you set up more. It's got the Pidgeot. It's got the Prime Catcher in the deck. All that good stuff. Um, and then we got, unfortunately, a future box. We can't see the list. But there was, however, another Zard in top 16. This, however, was a Pidgeot Charizard deck. So Pidgey Zard still having a good performance. Not as good as Bibril Zard, not as popular as Bibril Zard, but still having a good run. Because Pidgey Zard is still strong, even though it's a bit weaker into TM Devo. It's a bit weaker into Radiant Greninja. Pidgeot is just a broken card that is very, very good when combined with Charizard X. Like, we already know that right now. And the deck still kind of plays what it usually plays. I mean, Rodom, Radiant Zard does play the Buddy Poffin in favor of, you know, replacement of Battle VIP. Interestingly enough, there is a Hero's Cape as the ace spec of choice. So choosing to not play Prime Catcher or Maximum Belt, actually playing Hero Cape, which is a very interesting inclusion. But the Pokemon this card is attached to gets 100 extra HP. You know, put that onto your Charizard or your Pidgeot, and all of a sudden, they become a lot harder to KO. Could be good in the mirror. Hero Cape can also... I guess kind of counter TM Devo. If they don't vacuum the cape off, it makes TM Devo a bit worse because the Pokemon would still have plus 100 HP after being de-evolved. So that's actually a really interesting inclusion in the deck over the other two Ace Specs, which I feel like, you know, Zard is usually used to playing, but I guess Hero Cape might be the better one. And then finally, we have a Lost Box deck once again. Now, this one, we get to see the list. This is a Paradox Lost Box deck. Now, Lost Box does take a bit of a hit with rotation. It loses stuff like the battle vip it also loses some big cards like dragonite v um and also kyogre being a huge one especially now where there's like big decks where kyogre probably would have been really good to have however lost zone does still have a lot of strong you know strengths to it it's very strong it's very fast um you still have good stuff in the deck like the switches escape rope does rotate i forgot to mention that rope also rotates but the deck's still very fast also emergency board and prime catcher are pretty good additions to the deck they're extra switch cards and the ability to play moon hands still a very good concept and you can even see the one of raikou in the deck the raikou v obviously being really good with four seal stone and also being a really good lightning pokemon against lugia palkia and very, very good against Pidgeot, which are pretty popular Pokemon in the new format. I mean, Pelkia is really good with Goldengo, Pidgeot's good with Charizard, and of course, Lugia did win the tournament, so Lugia is going to go up, and Dunsparce does rotate. So, yeah, Lugia does no longer have that addition to protect itself from the Raikou V, and then Hand's also really good into those decks, too. 
The deck does play the Crisis Punch and two Town Store, or two Artisan, no Town Store. I thought it was a Town Store, it was Artisan, but it does have the Crisis Punch in the deck with the Cramran. Iron Bundle is a really interesting addition. One other thing to note, this deck doesn't play boss. It's actually opting just for the Counter Catcher and the Prime Catcher for the Gust cards of choice, so not playing any boss. But I guess you can favor that for double Roxanne, or you can Roxanne plus Prime or Roxanne plus Counter Catcher your opponent. But yeah, yeah, looks like the Paradox Lost Box deck is still going to be here. It's still going to be strong in our new meta, even though the deck maybe does get a bit slower because you no longer have access to Battle VIP. Um, you get Buddy Poffin, which is good because you can still Buddy Poffin for Comfies. You have Nest Ball still. It's not the end of the world. The deck still can be very strong. And that was it for the top 16. Again, unfortunately, we can't see every single deck list. However, like I said, if you want to see more term results here, you can actually go to the City League option here on limitless and you can actually just click on any of these tournaments if we wanted to click on this one here we can boom see a bunch of results here from a recent city league so this is definitely going to be another video i'm going to work on for the second channel post champions league so definitely something i do want to try out here on the channel because you can see this tournament was won by arctina there was a shampow that did get second place this one having the palkia in it um there was also a palkia Palkia Bax Caliber. Like, that's an interesting deck that okay, I don't know. But you get my point, right? You can kind of see the results here. Um, if you want to see more rotation decks, here's a future box deck that did good in this tournament. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the same one as the one that got top 16, but I definitely recommend checking out Limitless now that they got all these new features for Japan results. Because you even see like stuff like Lost Gudra did pretty good here in the City League. Got a, you know, Turbo Roaring Moon Karaidon single prize deck. This was, I think, the deck that. Um, not the same list, but a similar concept as to what did good at the uh, Champions League in Japan. I'm sure we'll see the deck list very soon. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more results, definitely go check out Limitless down below if you want to go find out how to look at all those results. But that'll be for me. If you enjoyed the video here on the second channel, make sure to leave a like. Let me know what you think of Lugia and Arceus winning. Well, not well, Ark didn't win, but you get the point. They were both the finalist decks. Let me know what you think of Lugia and Ark being the two last decks standing in the Champions League in 2024 in a new format. Do you think... That's a good thing or a bad thing. Let me know what you think of the new format and all that stuff, and I'll catch you on another video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.